you guys might think that I'm just cruising around the Muslim countries of Central Asia getting on the piss everywhere. Well, you're not far wrong, I guess. Let's go. Let's go find the train. Again, I am going to be on the slow train, the old Soviet train, so I'm look, looking forward to this. It's only maybe three hours to, um, to Bukhara, so let's go see what it's all about. I'm on what is, from the outside, looks like an old Soviet train, but as we all know, it's what on the inside that counts. Look at that. It's like, this is not old Soviet looking. We've got little TV screens going on up here. It's, um, I've paid for a cheaper seat, so I'm just on a seat, but wow, I got my own seat, like, just no neighbor to me, you know, like, and plenty of leg room, this is great. Alrighty guys, I've just uh, I've checked into my hostel. I've had a bit of a relax, Max, no tax. And uh, check out the entrance to the hostel. It's this beautiful old doorway here. But I was just having a look at the building next door, which looks like it's in, inhabited by homeless people, and it smells like that. But look at the building. It's uh, you can see all the the straw, all the straw and mud. So yeah, <laughs> fun. So I'm down in the the suburbs of suburbs of Bukhara and I'm gonna go for a walk into the center of town it's just after 6 p.m. so we'll just go I haven't had lunch yet so uh, we'll just go and have a little wander in I don't anticipate we get up to much uh, this evening I like on day one just sort of granding yourself having a bit of a look finding out where your hostel is in relation to the old town or whatever not getting yourself completely written off drunk or something on day one because you usually then don't find your way home so uh there's a there's a tip for the new players Alrighty, obstacle number one well, where i am here what an interesting so the call to prayer happening at this uh minaret that i can see you guys won't be able to see it over here but i can see how just beautiful uh intricately made it is I'm just kind of in this, I don't know, there's a madrasa here. Looks like another madrasa here. This one here. This here, looks like they're doing a bit of renovation works on it. It's shown on my offline maps to be like a swimming pool. So I guess uh, you'd, on the outside seating area here, you'd, uh, you'd come down here, have a seat. If it's anything like uh, the subcontinent, you'd probably wash your clothes or central swimming area another madrasa here and that is beautiful old minaret so this is a this is a fun little area isn't it right on we're only f five minutes out on, out from a hostel so I'm just gonna poke my head in here i was just talking to this one let's apparently check out my shadow it's a restaurant And apparently, yes, uh, heritage listed. Look at this. I got all the upstairs as well. I've seen these in Iran. So um, up on the top of these things here, um, they sort of designed that say the air will come through and it kind of cools as it goes down into the house. It was like a, um, an ancient form of air conditioning. And uh, I can attest to the fact from being in the Iranian deserts in August <laughs> a couple of years back and staying in accommodations with those that they really do work. I'm getting a feeling. Yeah, that little feeling when I like a place. I'm liking this. I'm digging this. There's just kids, you know, kicking the soccer ball around. Look at all these beautiful buildings old around here. Nothing is overdone. Um, it is 
it's what I was hoping to get when I went to Samarkand, the feeling, uh, but uh, which I didn't get because, uh, well, it was a polished tourist attraction, wasn't it? But I'm reminded of something that I read earlier. So these canals that run through Bukhara, uh, and I think that they sort of run right through the city. Um, these were sort of where people used to well, get their water from, their what do they uh, wash themselves or the rest of it. And it also was the reason why Bukhara had a whole heap of outbreaks of the plague. Apparently, and I can't remember the era, that Bukhara's average life expectancy was about 30, 30 years old, uh, mainly from the, the plague. <laughs> Kept on, yeah. But uh, apparently when the Russians came here, uh, they flushed them all out and gave them a good, good scrubbing and a clean. Looks like they could do with another, another little clean up. Well, apparently there's a whole network of these uh, canals running under and through Bukhara. Can you get, catch the plague <laughs> from smelling, smelling the water? You guys remember in Indiana Jones, um, what was that? Oh, the Last Crusade, when he ends up under the, what was he, where was he, Venice? Oh, here's somebody's medicine bottle. Um, is that the cure? <laughs> the cure for the plague just floated on past me. And Indy, like, he goes through into the basement and the next thing he's in with the rats in this old library thing. And then as a fire goes through and then he has to escape through the canals under Venice. And then there's a boat chase and his boat gets crushed. And oh my God, how did Indy survive? He survived. Well, this here is, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong. And if I get this wrong, it's Libya. I'm pretty sure this is the Labia Pond. Like Labia. Labia. Alright, it's the Labia Pond. Um, it's here. Alright. Labia Hayuz Pond. Something like that. Anyway, we'll go with that for now. This is pretty much marks the centre of uh, Bukhara. Uh, this is, right, well, you can see this is where everything's going on. I, I'm assuming this is a, was a, it's only two things it could be, a mosque or madrasa. So I'll um, check that one out later. So this is where all your little cafes, restaurants, la di da and a beautiful old tree. <sighs> okay, green labia. Here's another madrasa. This one here is interesting. Uh, like the one back in Samarkand that had the lions on it, this one here has where you can see peacocks and they're carrying sheep underneath them there and there and in the middle is a sun with a picture of a human's face in the sun this is in complete defiance of islamic law right here so as we learned in samarkand they're not allowed to show any living creature for whatever stupid reason but here they've just got bugger it we'll do human faces on suns we'll do mythical peacocks carrying sheep or pigs or i'm pretty sure they're sheep so um good on them they were just i wonder if the architect or whoever was doing that did it at night time as well and then he's like i'll show them i'm gonna put a peacock carrying sheep on this thing Well, this here, just down there is an old caravansari. Uh, where you'd rest your animals. And here's a traditional sort of market. It's very cool in here. It's really nice. So, um, they're still trading stuff. It looks a little trinkety maybe, but, uh, but anyway, probably similar stuff, I guess, uh, that they were doing back in the day. There's all sorts of jewelry and silks and traditional clothes. So, I guess on that level, not a lot really has, has changed here. Some pretty cool outfits here. Okay, you can get some fancy scissors. Look at that. Wow, it's just some cool stuff here, isn't it? Look at that gear. Okay. So this guy here, he makes these knives yeah. in a traditional method. This here is, you may have heard of Damascus steel. So you can see here, these, these are not 
patterns put into it. This is the layering of the manufacturing process of of uh, what you see like here. It's beautiful. Yeah, so that's not like an engraving or anything. That's just the multiple layers um, in the process of making Damascus steel. Yeah, beautiful. Pretty much um, same technique as yeah. It's always been done, yeah? No chance for me getting these into Australia. Look at that for a Damascus blade. Wow. And the weight of it, it's beautiful. You can really see that different layering there. Okay, thank you very much. These are a beautiful, uh, this is like a well, market. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Like a, yeah, just a little seller's stall of rugs and things like that. It's a beautiful, cool space in here. Come and sit down, have some tea. Yeah, not much has changed here, is it? It's a, I like this. This is um, this has got a good feeling. I like Bukhara. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just um, beautiful old buildings everywhere. Everyone's getting around on a bicycle here. It's really um. I really enjoy this a lot more than Samarkand, that's for sure. So where I am now, this is the Zindan prison uh, complex uh, for the Emir of the Khanate that was Bukhara. Um, so I wanted to come here for one specific reason that I read about in Paul Hopkirk's book, The Great Game was the um, tragic story of Stoddart and Connolly. Right, here we are, a place that you probably haven't heard of, but it's uh, very important. This is important. It's important to me to come and see this. This is known as the bug pit. If you're in the bug pit, that well, wasn't a good place to be. This is where, well, they've got a little, oh, you can kind of see down here. Oh. A little depiction of either Stoddart or Connolly. Who were Stoddart and Connolly? Good questions. Stoddart was sent here in about oh, the mid 1800s um, during British, Britain's campaign of Afghanistan and he was sent to see the Emir uh, of Bukhara to say hey don't worry guys like we're not going to come any further we're just going to like take Afghanistan and then maybe if you guys want to be on side with us, then that'd be cool and you can keep Russia away. away. Old mate Stoddart was not very good <laughs> in diplomacy and uh, he rocked up at the palace of the Emir. He arranged his meeting. He rocked up on horseback and didn't dismount and walked through the palace, came through on horseback through the palace gates and saluted the Emir from there. Now, this Amir had the nickname of the Butcher. Uh, he was known to be well, quite the tyrant. He loved a bit of torture. Uh, but the Amir took great offence at Stoddart uh, rocking up and yeah, not dismounting and meeting him in the appropriate manner. So, chucked him down in the pit here, which is a nearly seven metre deep pit known as the Bug Pit. Why so? Well, they love doing a little bit of torture. So they would throw down all sorts of bugs, scorpions, centipedes, I'm assuming scaly lizards, and they also used to chuck down like buckets of manure and things like that. That was a fun thing to do, so there he is there. Let's see if we can not drop it. The only way down there was by, they'd lower him down by a rope, and that was it. So Stoddart was down there for, well, it was quite, uh, quite a few months um, until the butcher gave him an ultimatum and said, hey, if you convert to Islam, we'll let you out, which he did. Um, and so it let him out. And then to his rescue came Connolly. So Connolly rocked up about a year after Stoddart had first been chucked into the pit. And Connolly rocked up and wasn't received well by the butcher. So, <laughs> so what did old mate the butcher do? He chucked both of them down here. For about 
Well, Stoddart was here for four years, Connolly here was here for three years. So, um, so they spent the rest of their time down here, so three years, down in this pit, dealing with, yeah, all sorts of like, yeah, scorpions and bugs and snakes and manure and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, what brought it to a close was Britain lost a battle in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, in, I think, the, the Kandahar. We'll go with that. Um, so all of a sudden, the Amir from here, he was like, oh, Britain's not such a big force. They're weak. They are weak. And I'm done with dealing with these guys in the pit. So he brought them out into a front of a place that we'll go and have a look soon and did some stuff to them. So we'll go have a look at that. These here are the external eh, fortified walls of well what is uh, known as the ark i can't remember. bukhara fell under many empires uh, in its history uh, until eventually i'm not even going to chuck a date out there it just kind of broke away and became its own carnate or emirate um, essentially the city of bukhara just kind of became like a country uh, and it was ruled by the, yeah, by the Emir, the butcher. And uh, there was very other, various other rulers as well. So this was kind of like, this was his little, uh, oh, this was his humble abode where he lived inside these walls here. So this is pretty cool. I haven't seen a fortified wall of this style because it looks to me like if you were trying to make a place impenetrable to forces, you wouldn't bung in all these pokey outy woody bits <laughs> like they've essentially created like a ladder that you could climb up like oh yeah no dramas foothold handhold foot yeah and then just like up you go lickety split i guess they had enough like uh you know they had a pretty good army going on also, any invading force had to come bloody long way across some pretty uh, inhospitable terrain. So um, they were like, oh, let's just give them a hand to get in here. They probably just want to, s to sup on some water and then we'll behead them. Now, from the best that I can figure out, uh, good friends Stoddart and Connolly were marched from their bug pit over there where they spent around four years uh, marched around to a huge crowd and they were brought to the Registan in front of here um, so the sandy place in front of the palace walls here or the arc walls to would have been beating drums and all sorts of things they lined the two men up uh, they made them dig their own graves. Uh, Stoddart, who had already converted to Islam, they beheaded him uh, in front of Connolly and uh, kicked him into his grave. They gave Connolly um, choice at that moment. He said, you can convert to Islam and we'll consider not chopping your head off. He told them to go get stuffed. And so they chopped his head off as well. And. Uh, so they are buried, I believe, from what I can figure out, probably somewhere under this dance floor. So there would have been a huge crowd around here. Imagine the noise, people throwing rocks, beating of drums, would have been trumpets and stuff like that. And then probably Connolly going, NEVER! That's how I imagine it happened. All right, here we go. More mosques and minarets. Uh, this, oh, minarets, <laughs> mosques and minarets and madrasas. Everything starting with M is here. This here is a uh, madrasa and it's still operational. It's, uh, so you can't actually go in there. People are in there learning, becoming learned. This is the Kalon Mosque. And this here is the Kalon Minaret with a fascinating piece of history. So. This minaret, about 50 meters tall, was built in 1120, 1127, from memory. So it was probably 
uh, Central Asia's tallest building at the time. And now we know what Genghis Khan used to love doing around this part of the world when he was doing his thing, destroying everything. He came here and saw this and was like, whoa, that thing is bloody cool. Nobody touch it. So they didn't. They left this standing. So this is still the original minaret. Whereas most things are sort of had to get rebuilt after Genghis Khan came through. Uh, of course he ordered everything else get destroyed. <laughs> they leveled the entire town, but left this standing. So this is pretty cool. And um, it's got all these bands around it. You guys probably can't see because the sun's in the wrong spot. But right up the top there is um, this blue tile work, which was the first, very first use of it uh, in Central Asia, which now you see everywhere else. So there you go, 900 year old and it's still standing. Okay, this is a much better angle <laughs> without the sun right in the face. Oh, so come around the back side of it and check it out. It's always, things sometimes look better from the back, don't they? There's the case of this here. So what a beautiful view from here. We can see all the cupolas, not cup holders. <laughs> the madrasa, the mosque. I'm guessing another madrasa. Um, and the minaret. And you can just make out up the top there the very first blue tile work of Central Asia. Now, you guys might think that I'm just cruising around the Muslim countries of Central Asia getting on the piss everywhere. Well, you're not far wrong, I guess. How is this for a view? You know, just looking over a 900 to a thousand year old minaret. Ah, it's a tough gig, isn't it? Cheers! Ding! This little dude here, this is Cha Mina which means four minarets. This used to be the grand entrance gateway through into a madrasa that no longer exists. You can kind of see a little bit of it here and just a slight little bit edge here. So you would have walked through there into your madrasa. But uh, this is all that is left standing. But it's pretty darn pretty, isn't it? So I tried to do my old trick of bribing someone to get me up into a minaret where they said that this would get me, got me onto the roof here, but not up into them. But anyway, I'm up here and, um, and that's all, is that all that matters? That's all that matters for now anyway. Okay. Luckily, that only cost me 5,000 sum, which is about 50 cents. So I can deal with that loss. It's not a loss, is it? This is quite beautiful up here. Actually, actually this is a win. This is the best 50 cents I've ever spent.
Well, I'm going to spend the last uh, few remaining hours of daylight. It's a beautiful time of the day, just after 7 p.m. Probably only another hour of daylight, actually. Going for a wander through the back alleys of Bukhara. So an enjoyable, a full on. Sam, this is an enjoyable way to spend a few hours, get your step count up, and um, I'm going to sign out. Thanks for coming along. Boop. Never!